Uh, I am Gilles. Uh, Gilles. I'm working for the French uh, insurance comparator Le Fure. And I'm Ozan, again, uh, working for Le Fure. We made a framework for uh, object model validation. Uh, so we provide a DSL, a way to build your own DSLs on top of your own uh, model. Uh, so the framework is based on code generation. And once it code generates a DSL on top of your, your model, uh, you can go ahead and write your validation rules. Uh, it's an, it, you can, it can be seen as an alternative to beam validation. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of toolbox to, uh, to uh, uh, bootstrap your DSL very easily. Yeah. Uh, if you use Java, you, uh, you stay in your e IDE, you write your, your rules uh, with a Fluent API. You very easily uh, build uh, on generating a Fluent API to, uh, to write your own uh, business rules. So, uh, on the screen, you have uh, the, the product is named Do. It's available on uh, Maven Central. Uh, so it's, it's really the yeah. 2.0 version uh, uh, has been out uh, quite so, uh, yeah. in a few uh, weeks, a uh, few last week. So you can go on with the functionalities. Tell how, how does it work? Uh, you have imagine that you have a sample model, and when you run the code generation of Do on top of the model, it generates a DSL sample model which gives you all the fields of that model and to be able to write your validation rule. And all that is type checked. And for each different type of Java, uh, you have your different uh, validation uh, constructs. So let's say that user birth date is a local date in Java, and you will get an age at for that method. And all this is declarative. So what, while you are declara declaring your validation rule, you don't really execute anything. Uh, then you pass your own instance of your model to that code, to that rule, which executes uh, the, the, the rule and gives you, gives you back the result. Yeah, and it's, it's completely uh, relying on the uh, uh, Lambda runtime of yeah. Java 8, uh, so it's, very very fast uh, all the optimization uh, available uh, uh, in the gvm for lambda uh, leverage the, the performance of of, of doob so I it's quite fast compared the uh, other approach to uh, to the same job uh, so so it's a tool how do you deploy it like in oh. other words um i mean is it a plugin is it an application where uh, how d is that integrated with other so you have a jar for runtime yeah so you will depend on the jar on uh, during the runtime and you have uh, maven and gradle plugins for code generation mm -hmm. uh once you code generate the uh, once you integrate into into your project you are good to go with your runtime jar that's all and we have a third jar to test the, the, r the validation rules that we are writing. So okay. it's an extension on, on Asset G framework. But maybe we can tell, tell about the natural language output. Uh, so yes, uh, we, uh, after you write uh, your business rules uh, uh, with a DSL approach on the Fluent, uh, with the Fluent API, you could uh, obtain uh, uh, the rule in a natural language, uh, just in plain text. You could very easily make proof checking uh, that the business logic is right on in your runtime application, yeah. and that's exactly what what we uh, we have done uh, for for Lifure. We are our first own user, so uh, <laughs> yes, uh, we we use do, but we, we use it a lot. We that's are near. Uh, how many rules we have uh, right now in production? Uh, More or less fi 500. Yeah, yeah, around 500. So that's the main reason we are, uh, we are, we are developing uh, Doob. I it's see. It's to obtain that kind of result. Uh, so here you, you, you have uh, uh, the, uh, the production uh, maintenance page of the website. And you could see there is oh, thousands of thousands of rules here. But uh, the the things you you could read also is the ru the rule as with a rule with a, an HTML rendering. It's quite easy, quite easy to uh, navigate between different uh, different uh, rules. Uh, 
track you could hit text so you could index everything. And uh, you have a lot of metrics that we capture at runtime, time. Uh, so uh, you could detect hotspot, but hotspot in your business, not hotspot in the GVM. Monitor uh, what's happened in your business logic. Very easily, it's lightweight. So uh, it's not something we, st we store we are just some uh, monitoring, uh, transient monitoring. Yeah, it's a runtime monitoring for the for business rules at the end. Uh. Then we can go ahead to our partners saying that, okay, we've been implementing that rule for you for that time, and in this uh, time period, uh, the rule uh, was triggered that, that much time. So we can go ahead and say that, okay, if we, if we uh, disable that rule, you can get more prospects uh, on that profile. Uh, cool. So that's the story. You have uh, you have a rule in French because we are in Paris. Uh, <laughs> all our business logic is described in French, but you could also switch uh, and change your your uh, your local very easily and stay uh, with a, a fluent reading uh, of the business rules. It's quite easy to uh, to run because it's only Java. You don't add any. Uh, uh, yeah. Runtime or d different kind of tools to manage in your in your uh, in your code base. Mm -hmm. You are so still in Java, so it's available for free. Do you get on, on yeah. Twitter yeah. on GitHub? In GitHub, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and GitHub uh, uh, and Apache, the Apache, Apache license. license. Yeah, yeah. So everything is free. We and the project is released on Maven Central. So I yeah. see. It's already and, uh, available. Definitely, we, we expect to continue the project uh, yeah. for our own usage, but uh, we expect also to, uh, to find some other company who maintain the, uh, the project. Yeah. It's quite mature project because we use it in production since like uh, nearly one year uh, now. Yeah. Uh, we continue to improve. For now, we only do validation, but we want to well, the language is already extended to make also mapping. Uh, so there are already lots of frameworks do w which does object-to-object uh, -object mapping. And what we want to do is to da do that mapping, but declaratively. Uh, so say that, OK, I have two different models, and I want to transform one model to another one. Uh, so I can write the ma mapping logic mm -hmm. uh, declaratively. Uh, on top of using the same constructs that we have in do. So I see. Uh, this field of my model is uh, uh, that other field from my other model. Uh, so so if for it yeah. for b uh, it's um, so the use case would be uh, in big data or wh what's uh, what type of... Um there are lots of... There can for our use case, we don't yep. use that much big data on top of that subject. But for our use case, we have lots of partners, and all the partners are uh, uh, the use their web services. And of course, there is okay. a mapping, lots of mapping code from our model to their model. Uh, mm -hmm. And so the code is really heterogeneous, and we don't know how we will uh, get more code quality from that code. Uh, so going for a declarative approach, we want to increase the code quality have the runtime metrics, and also the auditability of the uh, of uh, mapping logic. So at the end, it's a contract between our us and the and the insurance company. Uh, but and on the other side, definitely it's really a uh, shape for performance. So uh, we don't have the usage for big data, but big data, yeah. but uh, you you don't have a uh, strong overhead on. Uh, you could imagine to use. Yeah, yeah. If you you ha you have a need for a DSL uh, on that side of your business, uh, uh -huh. it's really compatible. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Huh? Cool. So that's all. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank for you for receiving <laughs> us. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you.